I'm Dr. Brett DePoyster from The Aquarium Vet, and in this short lesson, we're going to walk through a summary of the nitrogen cycle. The nitrogen cycle is the most important biological process that happens in our aquariums. It doesn't matter if it's a 2.2 million liter system with sharks and stingrays like this one, or a 40 liter tank with a single Siamese fighting fish. Ultimately, that biological process is exactly the same. Without the nitrogen cycle, the water in our tanks will quickly become toxic, impacting the health of the fish, and in severe cases can even result in fish mortalities. In future lessons, we're going to delve deeper into the science of the cycle and also discuss how this impacts the fish. But in this lesson, we're just going to summarize the general concepts and processes that make up that nitrogen cycle. So let's jump into it. In order for the nitrogen cycle to begin, first we need a source of ammonia. And there's actually several sources of ammonia within our aquarium. The most significant is actually produced by the fish themselves as the end product of protein metabolism. And this is predominantly excreted by the gills directly into the water. Other sources of ammonia include dead fish, decaying plant matter, uneaten food, and really any organic waste that's further broken down by the bacteria producing the ammonia. Once ammonia is present, the nitrification process then starts with different types of bacteria, particularly nitrosomonas-like and nitrospira. And this bacteria actually uses the ammonia as a food source. And as the bacteria feed on that ammonia, the waste product that's produced is actually nitrite. This is beneficial for a few different reasons. First, the bacteria eat and reduce the amount of that toxic ammonia that's in the aquarium. And second, the waste product, nitrite, although still toxic to fish, is significantly less toxic than ammonia. Fortunately though, there is another type of bacteria that prefers to use nitrites as a food source. And this is the second process of the nitrification process. These nitrospire-like bacteria process the nitrites and the end product of metabolization is nitrates which are significantly less toxic to fish and other aquatic animals compared to ammonia and nitrites. However, at high nitrate levels, we can have long-term or chronic impacts on the health of our fish. And we should be keeping these as low as possible within the aquarium. There are three main methods of reducing nitrates in the aquarium. The first are our water changes. After all, the solution to pollution is dilution. Furthermore, in our freshwater systems, aquatic plants can use the nitrates as a nitrogen source. Lastly, specialized filters and media can encourage the growth of denitrifying bacteria, which will use those nitrates as a food source and break them down. However, this process is traditionally a more advanced setup and not a primary source of denitrification in home aquariums. However, if you think that sounds interesting, we will certainly be going through those in future lessons. So there you have it, a generalized summary of the nitrogen cycle. And although it was very brief, it provides the fundamental concepts required for future lessons where we're going to delve deeper into the science and what exactly is going on in our aquariums. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in our next lesson.